Okay, is this sixth grade math? Well, no, not exactly. You're not going to be doing problems like this in the sixth grade in terms of your math course. However, uh, in the sixth grade, uh, you're definitely going to be starting to be introduced to algebra concepts for sure. But to really the point of this video is to explain this concept. Now, what am I uh, talking about? What is this? Well, this is called a function in algebra. And it's a huge, huge topic. And I'm going to try to explain this at a really basic level, just to give you a good introduction of what a function is. So something like this doesn't have to look so scary. Okay. It's not that scary. Uh, you know, oftentimes mathematical notation is pretty intimidating, but, uh, if you're like, I have no idea what this is, what is this? What does this mean? Why is it so important? Well, hopefully I'm going to explain this pretty well here in a second. Again, this will just be a quick basic introduction to the concept of, of uh, functions, and I'll try to do it at a level that even a sixth grader, a third grader, who knows, anybody can understand it. But uh, we'll get into that in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. Um, you probably already guessed that. But uh, over several years, I've constructed uh, what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. If you're interested, you can check out my math help program by following the link in the description of this video. But uh, basically, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from pre-algebra, um, algebra one, geometry, algebra two. I'm going to be launching my pre-calculus course here shortly. I'm pretty excited about that. But I also do a lot in the area of test preparation. So if you're studying for the GED, SAT, ACT, uh, GRE, GMAT, um, ASVAB, Accuplacer, uh, CLEP exam, ALEX, uh, teacher certification exam, a nursing school entrance exam. All those exams have a lot of math on them. And if you don't do well in the math section, you don't do well on the exam. So we don't want that to happen. Uh, you can just go to my website and check out my full course catalog. I should have the exam you're studying for. If I do not, drop me a line in my contact form and I'll help you out the best I can. Um, I also do a lot with independent uh, learners like homeschoolers. So if you homeschool, I have a great complete homeschool learning system that you might want to be uh, uh, checking out. Uh, and then obviously I help those of you that are struggling in your current math courses. Now, if you're serious about uh, learning math and you want to really, really do well, then you got to do this, right? I can't do this for you. You have to take great math notes. So over decades of teaching math, this is like the golden rule. Those students who have great math notes almost always do very, very well. And the reverse is true. Those students who are like, mm, I'm not into note taking. It's just not that cool. Uh, plus, you know, I like to catch up on my social media uh, in math class, or I just like to watch the teacher and just think to myself, I have a photographic memory. I've, I've heard that one through decades of like, I don't need to take notes because it just all goes into my brain. Uh, believe me when I tell you, maybe like 0.00001% of the world's population, uh, people have that ability, especially uh, in mathematics. It's just too many details. You got to be highly focused. Don't um, talk yourself out of not taking notes. You got to be engaged and you got to eliminate uh, the distractions. You have to stay focused on what the teacher is teaching. And the best way to do that is to be uh, uh, really engaged and taking great math notes. But as you're improving in your note taking, you can use my notes to uh, study. Those would include pre algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. You can find the links to those notes in the description of this video. All right, let's talk about functions. Well, let's start off. Um, and just let's just look at math uh, in terms of grade level. So here you have like your elementary uh, school stuff, and then here is middle school, and then here is let's say high school, and then this is college. So this idea of functions, you kind of start getting a little bit of it here in middle school. For you know, for the most part, it all depends on what course and curriculum you're using. But in high school, you're going to see this word functions like everywhere functions functions right? and it's you know has a specific definition when something's called a function it means something okay we just don't refer to things as a function like a quadratic function or a rational function okay or trigonometric function as you're studying this okay and of course your high school math is going to lead up to you doing well in uh, college level mathematics so you got to really understand this and this, again this is a huge 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 
topic or word that's used in mathematics. So what does it mean? What is a function? Uh, now, uh, this is going to be my basic explanation because there's a lot of different ways we can look at this. All right, this is a pretty big involved topic, but let's just kind of distill it down into something super basic. And I'm going to use this uh, pretty common model called a function machine, a real basic model to explain this. Okay, so here's our little machine right here, and then we have input and we have an output. Okay, this is going to give us a little model of what a function represents. Okay, so a function machine, all right, is we could take numbers. We take uh, some numbers. Let's take the number one, okay, and let's throw it into our machine. Okay, now our machine um, follows some sort of rule that we give it, and I'll, I'm going to adjust this here in a second. So we're going to take a number, we'll throw it into the machine, and then another number is going to pop out, let's say three. Okay, so this is how our, our function machine works. We have input numbers, we put it into some sort of machine, it does something to the numbers, and then some other number pops out. Okay, so for one, all right, one went to three, and here, one, three, we can kind of match them up this way. So um, a function has to do with little points on the x, y uh, plot, okay? So if you're not familiar with uh, uh, a graph here, let's just draw it out real quick. Here's x and here's y. These little points that we can plot on here, we can plot as uh, ordered pairs, okay? And so um, if you're not familiar with this, you haven't studied this yet, don't worry about it. Just know that this is like an address system, okay? One, three, okay, our, our one goes our, uh, with our x, okay, and our three is with our y, and our input value is our x, and our output value is our y. So when we plug in a number and another number pops out, these two numbers here, we can plot on this little um, x, y uh, coordinate plane, okay? So hopefully you have some knowledge of that, but if you don't, let's just continue on because you know, you'll still understand the essence of a function here in a second. All right, so we can plug in all kinds of numbers. So when we, let's actually put this over here, one. When we plugged in one, we uh, got a three. All right, perfect. So let's plug in some other numbers into our nice little function. How about a five? Maybe we plugged in a five and a seven pops out, so that's five and seven. So this little rule here, okay, is what is assigning this. Now let's actually get specific with a real life function. Okay, let's uh, use something like this. F of x is equal to x squared. Okay, and I'm going to define a function here, but let's just keep kind of going on so we kind of understand the essence of a function. So this x squared part, this is the rule. Okay, this is the rule. So we're going to put x squared right here. And this little f of x part, this is the input. Okay. So let's pick a number for our little x. Okay. So let's say, let's find 1. Okay. Or let's do something different. No, let's do 1. Okay. So let's put our input value. We're going to grab some numbers. We're going to throw it into our machine. So we want to, put, we want to place this x here with a 1. Okay, so what we want to do is find f of 1. So that means this for uh, where we have an x, we're going to replace that input number with. So here is our rule. Let's write it over here so we can see this a little bit better. So this is the rule. It says, oh, okay, so whatever x you, um, whatever number you want x to be equal to, in this case 1, we're going to just square it. All right, so that means 1 is squared. So when we plug in 1, Okay, the rule tells us to take that input value, whatever that x value is, and square it. So 1 squared is, in fact, 1. Okay, so it's going to write some numbers down here. So for this function, we have the point 1, 1. Okay, 1 and 1. Let's find another uh, value for this function and uh, just kind of warm up to this notation. So what about 2? All right, well, uh, that's our input value, so let's go to this machine. We want to find f of 2, so we're going to have to replace uh, in our rule the number. It says whatever your input value is, square it. That's the rule. So it's 2. 2 squared is 4. All right, so perfect. So I got 2 and 4. Now these points here, 
Okay, if I create enough of these, it will actually be the graph of this function. Okay, so again, functions have graphs, they represent points, but they're like you got want to think of them as like a little machine. All right, let's continue on. Let's do another one here. How about f of, uh, let's find an input value of three. Okay, so we're gonna plug in three, three right there. So it says, okay, the rule tells us to square that. Three square, that's nine. So three, nine, perfect, okay? Now, that's the essence of how a function machine works, okay? So we have input values and we have output values. Now, all these input values here, all these input values, okay, which would be these values here, we call them a certain name. We call this the domain of the function. It's all the numbers that were allowed to plug into the function. And now um, all the numbers that we are allowed to plug into the function, whatever we get out, those output values we call the range of the function, okay? So we have input values that we can plug in, those are the domain, and then we get the respective output values those are the range, okay? So this is kind of like dabbling with this basic function here. And in fact, this is a function. Now, I want to define what a function is. And now let's kind of get, uh, uh, let's kind of back up a little bit here. All right, so let me kind of erase all this. Okay, so we already kind of good feel how this function machine works, okay? Now we throw a number in and then we get an output number. So let's kind of play around with this again. So let's say we have some function, here is the rule of it, and we plug it in and we plug in a one and uh, a three pops out, okay? No problem, we see how that works. So let me just kind of erase this here. So we're like, okay, wonderful, one, three, okay? one and three. Now we don't know yet if this is a function. You'll kind of see what I'm talking about for a second. So you go into your like little uh, bag of numbers here, your like little uh, thing. You're like, okay, let's grab another number and throw it into our function machine. Let's grab a two, perfect. Uh, we'll plug a two into our machine and a seven popped out. All right, two and seven, no problem. And then now you're going through your little bag and you're like, oh, here's another one. Okay, I found another one. Let's plug it into our machine. Okay, now when you plug it into the machine, all right, our little function machine, let me erase this here, on this what this particular function, what do you think is gonna pop out? Okay. Well, the last time we, we plugged in a one, a three popped out. But what if we grabbed another one of these ones and threw it back in the machine and a nine pops out? You're like, hmm, okay, well we got a one and then we got nine this time. Well, this right here represents something that is not a function. This is not a function. This is something called a relation in mathematics. So now we can actually define what a function is, okay? So a function is this. For every input value, you only get to have one unique output value. So uh, if the first time I plugged in one, I got three, and guess what? That is the only output va value that you can have, okay? So Functions are little machines like this, such that when you plug in a input value, you only get an, uh, one output value. So you can see it graphically here, one three and one nine, you cannot, this would not be uh, two numbers or two points that would be a part of a function. Okay, there's all kinds of different ways that we can kind of see this. Uh, we can show a mapping diagram, we can show a graph, etc. But you basically just need to think of it in this way, all right? You go, you have a bunch of numbers over here. If you, you know, uh, come across the same number again, and you throw it into your machine, and you get another number, all right? You're like, hey, last time I threw in one, I got a three. This time, I threw in one, I get a nine. This cannot happen in a function. That's the essence of a function by definition, okay? Is that for every input, there's one and only one output. Now I'm kind of using basic terminology, but if you understand that, then that is a function, okay? Now, things that you do get different output values um, are called relations, okay? And those are actually uh, pretty important uh, in mathematics as well. So let's just kind of quickly wrap this up. So in, um, in mathematics, we have this big old universe of things called relations. And effectively, they're little x, y points that we can plot 
uh, graphically, okay? Now, some relations, some relations are functions, okay? And I just described why, okay? So some relations are functions, but all functions are relations, okay? And uh, the most important thing you need to remember is that for every input value, okay, you'll, you're going to only have one and only one output value, one unique output value in a function. And all the numbers that we can are, are allowed to plug into an actual function, if we do have a function, okay, all those input numbers that you, you plug into the function um, are is called the domain, and then the respective output values is called the range. And let's just kind of wrap it up there because, again, uh, you know, you start to really learn a lot about functions as you continue your education. But just remember this, functions, okay, the root word here is fun. Functions are fun. And you're like, oh, yes, I love functions. Uh, I just, you know, can't wait to study them all the time. Well, you know, have a good attitude about them because you're going to see them everywhere. And hopefully this was a nice little warm-up introduction uh, to the concept of functions. And, um, you know, if you were never familiar with functions and things like this, now you can say, oh, okay, this thing right here, this is our rule, like in our function machine, and this is the input, okay? And this little H right here, that's just the name of the function. Again, if you want to know more about functions, I have tons of videos on this in my algebra uh, playlist on my YouTube channel. But uh, anyways, if this uh, video helped you out in some way, please consider smashing that like button. That helps me out. And again, if you're uh, new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. Um, I've been on YouTube for over 10 years, over a thousand videos on YouTube. So if you like my teaching style, please take advantage of all those videos there from basic to advanced math. Uh, those are my playlist on my channel. Um, so you can kind of go through those, uh, tons of material. Okay. So if you want to know about functions, more about functions, I have lots and lots of videos on them. Of course, my best, uh, help on functions will be in my math. Uh, program, something like my algebra course, if you're in an algebra level, but if I even teach it in my pre-algebra course as well. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.